Hello everybody, I'm back. It's episode 30 of my Disco Elysium playthrough. I haven't even loaded the game yet, but I needed to start recording because I just keep thinking about what's going to be in Ruby's um, diary in the journal. And I keep thinking about the fact that I think we're approaching the end of the game and how cool a lot of the stuff that we've done recently has been and how cool some of the scenes we've witnessed have been. And I want to keep playing. And I want to see what happens, basically, which I think is obviously a sign of a good game. Um, so here we are, episode 30. I'm recording this on Wednesday. Am I going to put it out today? I might put this out today and record another one tomorrow, depending on how it goes. But I shouldn't say that because you'll know whether or not that's happened. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and put this out Wednesday afternoon and then maybe I'll record another one Thursday. I'm fairly quiet with work this week. So should we just start playing? Should we just start playing the damn game? See what's in that journal. I hope everyone's well. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. Um, it looks like we're in the end game period. That's what I'm getting. Barbarian dude in the comments said that um, it will be interesting to see now because I, I did decide not. There was like a comment from Kim before I went around the corner suggesting you know, that maybe we could wait until I get my gun because it'll be good to have my gun. But I can't get my gun until 10 o'clock at night. And we're in the thick of it now. So let's just play. Let's see how we get on. And let's see what happens. And maybe there'll still be a chance to get the gun because that was a very early mission. A very early task was to try and get my gun back. So I wouldn't mind it. Um, also, we've got some issues here. I need to re-up on my health. Uh, morale's okay, but we definitely need to sort that out. Um, but first up, let's have a look at Ruby's journal. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. And now let's put it away. Now examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. This was important to her, when it was still hers. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues, always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. Oof. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. And what did she write about the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. Oh. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Anything about Laputa Madre? That name isn't mentioned, as far as you can tell. No mention of Laputa Madre. What about this M? Could this be Laputa Madre? Here, March 9th and March 15th, 
Read the entry from March 9th first. Great. Ems Peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Hmm. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. You didn't follow through. You should have shot her in the head. Goddamn right, I should have. This is a coincidence. I would never kill people for a mob boss. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. Read the March 12th entry. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people. The boys, for example. But experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. That must have been one hell of a conversation. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Interesting. I just don't think she killed a mercenary. It's mostly a gut feeling, though since we let her walk out without hearing her side of the story. I have the same feeling. Maybe I should have arrested her, but do you remember when I arrested those those musicians, the people who were going to make the rave night? I vowed never to arrest anybody again. Probably a mistake. No, I just didn't want to... Um, feels too easy just to arrest. <laughs> I'd make a terrible police officer. Anyway. Let's see how this goes. That would be a first, or a fourth, but who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. Kim, am I really a Lobuta Madre agent? Then who do you think killed the Merc? If she didn't do it, maybe it's good. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Mm. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Am I a Madre agent? Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. Okay. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... But no one heard the shot. Seems plausible. I don't know. T-Man wouldn't fuck me over. Um, I know what heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Amazing. Right, so we just got a load of updates. Um, we completed the task of looking for Ruby. So that's good. Um, am I Laputa Madre's peony? Ruby said that you're a notoriously corrupt cop. Laputa Madre's peon. Peon? Peony? Peon? Don't know how they pronounced it. That's why she was scared of you. When you get the chance, call your station to find out more if you dare. Okay, so I call the station from the vehicle, right? Back outside the whirling in rags, which I need to return to anyway. Someone there has something to answer to. Okay, so we'll just go about there and chat. 
But first, let's have a proper look around here. Eight. Real, thank you very much. We need some health items, ideally. Yes! That's very good news. Let's go full. Full health. Dark water trails into the distance. Look at all this. That was such a cool moment in the game. I love the colours. And the... The art in this is phenomenal. I know I've spoken about that a lot. But it is really so cool. What a project. I'd lo absolutely love to have been in the offices of the dev team. Is there some dodgy stuff about the dev team? Maybe we won't go into it. I don't quite know. But um, uh, I just heard something or read a comment. I may have misread it. But the focus really was supposed to be saying I'd love to have been in the offices to see all of the artwork up on the walls for all the different parts of the game. It must have been amazing. It was strange. Concrete pipe buried in the sand, buried in sand and dust. Money. I'd also like to become a multi-millionaire, so hopefully we'll get back to that at some point. Although, oops, probably pretty pointless to actually have loads of money in this. Okay, should we now go upstairs? Do you remember right at the start or when we first came in here in the last episode? Went upstairs first and then I was like, no, let's let's look around the, the, the downstairs first. Not realising that the downstairs was going to actually let us find Ruby. I just assumed Ruby would be up here. But let's see what's up here. I know we need to go back, but obviously we need to investigate everything, don't we? We might be able to exit a different way. What's this? Another postcard. The glass is covered with grime and dust you can barely see out. Oh! Stones fall, it's a long way down. The central support beam has been destroyed by artillery fire. Gusts of wind, the height feels dizzying. Can we go around here? Is this it? It's just the roof, that's it. Can't go anywhere else. Okay. Looks like we're leaving. did we leave? How do we leave? Yeah. Let's get back to a place where we can teleport. Let's go. Where do I have to be to do that? Up here? Love clicking on the wrong thing. I don't think that will ever change. Why can't I move back? Do you think I've just got... Why have I got to walk over there? Also, got a new skill point. Don't need that yet, though. Perhaps could do some more of this, but let's let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Let's not spend it until we need it, I think. I think what I might do is straight away call the um, precinct. Because we're going to run past the vehicle anyway.
I really am starting to see why. Stop. Just up ahead. Hold that thought. The danger. <gasps> what you have isn't enough. You'll need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Interesting. So this is why I couldn't just teleport over. I don't have... I've got a gun, haven't I? But isn't it out of commission? You try to take comfort in the weight of your pry bar. Or crowbar. Or pry bar. Call it what you will. It doesn't stand a chance against military grade weaponry. What is happening here? I think I'm going to say I'm not ready and see what Kim suggests because I don't... I mean, it's clearly telling me I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, let's, let's say I'm not sure I'm ready. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Shit. What have I got? I don't even have that gun anymore. I gave it away, didn't I? Oh, no, it's here. Broken. Should we very quickly see if we can buy a gun in here? I don't think we can. This is why I need my gun, everybody. It's shut. No. Right, tell you what. Save. And then let's see. Let's just go deal. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh my god. This is huge. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Alright? Look how cool that armor looks. Shut up. Talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. I should put on my best clothes. As in, I need to get my gloves on and stuff like that. Who's this over here, by the way? Can you see that? Let me move my camera. I only just spotted them. Wow. Kim, what's going on here? Shh. Fair enough. <laughs> a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Oh my god. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Sounds like the armored figure is weeping. The armored figure is terrifying. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? I spotted them. I spotted them. Only just though. Also, look at us standing here blatantly. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. Oh, the big one's the mercenary at the gates, the scab leader. Stop, this is the police. Let's walk away. What do we do? We're out of time, this is. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. The big one is the mercenary at the gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. I don't have a gun, though. Is this going to go to shit because I didn't get my gun? I don't think I'm going to be able to get them to all stand here and chill for nine hours until I can get my gun. Here we fucking go. Stop. This is the police. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Fuck! 
the only word you can make out. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. How? Easy now, no one needs to die here today. Say that. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. I'm wearing the gloves already, that's good. I didn't change my outfit. I feel like now's not the time. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. Shit. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. He's gonna get shot. Feel your fists contract as you stand there between these men, all carrying real weapons. No, no, it's okay. Soften him up and trust the others to attack if it comes to that. Make him talk. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out. Let's drag it, it out. I don't know about this getting under his skin. He'll only get under yours. I'm barely keeping you together here. This is it. Peace. Oh my God. Peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Please. Who is that? Point to the man. I didn't know you had a third guy. Listen, they didn't do it. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. Think of an argument. Talk about a hanged man. Where is Clashy? She, she can explain. Why did I not find my lost gun? As if I'm saying that. Um, How are we doing? Got 72% chance of this and a 72% chance of that. So that's good. But first of all, let's drag it out. Who's that? Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. Owen Cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude? Rip you open. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. Points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? Kills? Smart loincloth. Thank you. Keep fox natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Uh. I think we do this now. Think of an argument. International something. International law. Don't say it because I failed that. At least we've got another chance. Don't say it. But now you stood there scratching your ass for 1.5 seconds, you think this helps things? Yes. Yeah. Easy now. Easy. Just tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Let's try that. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? Oh my god. Do you think it was me? Oh my god. It probably was, wasn't it? That's quite tempting. But then I always have this tempting to just go nuclear. Temptation to just go nuclear. Um, I need a little more time to figure this out. Oh fuck. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. We don't think it's Ruby. Could be me. Could be Classy. Could be Titus. Wait. Time. You had time to fuck around in that church to run errands for your union chief. I saw you. Time is up, loincloth. Give me a fuck. Name. Now! This is such a huge fork in the road. I don't know if I want to throw Titus under the bus because Titus, we and Titus have some respect. I think it's better to throw somebody under the bus who's not here right now. Ruby's not a runner, so it might make sense to say it was Ruby. But me and Kim have both agreed that it's, we don't think it is. Clashy, go, Clashy. <laughs> the bird. You're fucking telling me a bird killed our cut. Inadvertently, the shot was meant for her. She had a past and it caught up with her. She used to work in industrial espionage and... Kim's getting involved too. You think I'm fucking stupid? 
What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? How about the kit? Go ahead. Say inadvertently, one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. 28%? Oh! I can't leave. I can't. I can't change it. Well, I gotta have a go, right? I've gotta have a go. Maybe I'll get lucky. Your mind grinds to a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying, pointed at her. You move your mouth like a fish gasping for air. No, she wasn't even there. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle. I just got Elizabeth killed. Oh no, I feel bad about that. That's really bad. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I was trying to do Macho Man Randy Savage. Not the time. Bad impression and not the time. The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. I'm okay. I'm okay. The woman grabs her left side. She's down. Her white shirt soaks her blood red around her abdomen. He gasps for air. Gasps for air. She's not. She's bleeding out. Shit. If she doesn't get help in 10 minutes, she'll die. Shit, 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 shit. Fuck this! The man starts pulling something out from his pocket. Eugene! One second, sorry, I've just got a message from a number I don't know. Oh, all good. All good, all good. Not now, phone. Gene! Cancel Lizzie! Now! You're all drunk, look at yourselves. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. Right, here we go. I've got a 72% chance of this. Talk about Hanged Man. Here we go. Dangerous. God. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Yeah. I don't fucking act so well. Lely had a hard on for making faces for you natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is done now. Trigger time. Who are you, Corty? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. No. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Listen, you're Lely. Everybody says good things about him. He was a talker, but... But natal 41, that really happened, didn't it? He had blue eyes, didn't he, your colonel? Include, your colonel did not deserve to go out like this. I promise I will find his killer. Um, it was a good talker. What do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kid tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Keep talking. Benatal 41, that really happened, didn't Our it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship pipes, right in the fucking. <laughs> he likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lady knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. I 
that didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipt here. Points to Titus and Eugene. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you Fox did nothing. Don't know why I moved my head there. Just thought you might want to see. See what's happening. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say, tattoo fuck? You'll die next. Right when she gets out. He had blue eyes, didn't he, your colonel? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Conclude, your colonel did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop, his killers stand right there, shitting their pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I really would like to know what would happen if I'd said it was Titus. If Titus would have just got shot. They... They didn't... The woman holds onto her side, teeth rattling. Sure. Blood's all gone out now. Not long to go till the rattle starts. One down, girl. Seven to go. Big talk, but you got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Uh, where's Clashy? She can explain it. I say that. Who the fuck is that? Clashy, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! Great timing, Gut. Unarmed, punched, but keeping it together. Oh my god. Is this where Gart becomes the main character? Gart, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. Let me just show you again, under my camera. There's us two. Could move my camera top left, couldn't I? But I'm not gonna. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Basically I'm learning that by not arresting some fucking party goers, I have screwed myself from then... From arresting those guys, I then have gone on to not arrest people when I get the chance. I can see why people play this through again and again to go down the different routes and look at the different options. And I can see why people watch YouTube playthroughs of it to see how other people approach it. It's been such a journey. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. Well, Pines Rep does not approve of this. Why did I... I'm not saying that. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. Yes. So what? I think they're gonna make me say that, aren't they? Yeah, so what? You should be drunk too. Or, like, drunker. You don't want to die sober, do you? Your judgement is impaired, you'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> Wild Pines is not going to forgive you massacring a bunch of innocent people. We're working together. She knew you're out of control. She told me. I'm gonna say that. She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. Oh. She doesn't give a shit about you, silos. Stay cool! How is she? I'll be okay. I'll be She puts her hands on uh, puts her bloody hand on her heart and starts shaking. She'll be gone soon too. Company bitch is gone. Lady's cunt is gone. Lady's gone. Fuck are we still doing in this shithole? Looks around, tired, suddenly, sad even. 
guys, I, um, uh, I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun. Hold your ground. Any more of you run, I shoot you myself. Shanky ran off. We're doing this together. They're afraid, all of them. Trembling reeds in the wind. They'll run, scatter soon, one by one. No, the rest will stay. They would hold their ground, even if it means dying here. I've not. You. I don't want to admit that I've lost my gun. But here we go. Why did I not find my lost gun? What's that, loincloth? I can't hear you. Sounds like you got your mouth full of dick. Rude. Shit. This is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. Kill me and you'll never find out who killed your colonel. I've been withholding information. Go ahead then, kill me, I want to die. God damn it, I did my best, I just need more time to solve the murder. Me and Kim are going to fucking murder you. Let's say that, I've been withholding information. Have I though? I suppose I have a bit. Let's say that. Rude. Kill him. The porcelain man raises his rifle and Thanks. takes aim at you. His hands are steady and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Kim, where is Kim? Blink, think. Please let me have good reaction, have a good percentage here. Kim's got his gun out. Kim's got his gun out. Shit. Well, do I try it anyway? Here's the thing. I'm not going to get a chance to do this again. Surely I try it. Oh no, maybe I say Kim, where is Kim? Ah, Kim, where is Kim? From the corner of your eye, oh. you see the lieutenant raise his pistol. Oh my God. And aim it at Rude. But Rude is absolutely covered from head to toe in armor. Blink, think. You steer down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. I think it's over his for me. Eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. I don't... The shot rings and you stumble. Something violently tugs at your shoulder, pushing you backwards with incredible force. Okay, that's not too bad. I've just been shot in the shoulder. I've only got two more bits of health. Let's heal up one. That didn't do anything. Why didn't that add a, th add a bar? A volcano of burning pain erupts from your left shoulder. Look at all the other Hardy Boys with this stuff. The pain flows over your entire body like an awful shock. A grim knowing rises from within. Half of your body must be gone. I'm really enjoying this. And, I, and again, this is like the kind of game... Like an RPG like this. I... Most computer games are played where there's been a big story and you get to the end and the story comes together. You're playing it in the moment and things are just happening. You're not getting these little breaks, these little roles, these choices to be made. And now I can really see the appeal of this kind of game for this. To be able to be like in the finale and to be reading and hearing about all these big storyline developments happening with the major characters all in one scene like this but sort of being able to enjoy it and take it in and have the time to process and think is really cool. Even if I'm making the wrong decisions, I just I I can I can see the appeal now. Bit late. Bit late, but I can see the appeal. Good game. Good game you got here. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling, he aims face pale. Oh no. Come on, Kim. Then, two shots ring out and you hear a scream. But you're too hurt to see who got hit. Well? I mean, why aren't these two reacting? <gasps> Is that Titus on the floor? No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's the, that's the woman. We can't see where Titus is. I don't know if Titus just did a runner. We can see the rifleman has been shot. We got blood down here, but that's mine. These two, why aren't these two just killing us? 
Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets. What a shot! Staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. What a shot, Kim! An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Who shot him then? To the other two. Why? Did they were they supposed to shoot us? Oh God! Watch out! Oh no! You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and panic, and a pistol raised, aiming at your chest, point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. Fucking hell! I've got a skill point, but it's not going to make any difference. And also, I can't just change it. The gun's pointing at me. I don't have time to change my outfit, put on a funny hat to see if my reaction speed gets better. Let it happen. I can't do that. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Here it comes. Death. I mean, 3% chance. Imagine. I deserve this. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. I'm alive. You fall down like a rag. I'm still alive though. Surely. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. If I'd had my gun. I should have just kept going till 10 p.m. and got the gun, but I was too excited. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are yelling. Someone is running, jumping over you. In the background, you hear gunfire shatter glass, and then a man in pain. A familiar sound. This is so exciting. It's Titus with a splat like meat. You hear bullets rip into him, his voice still giving orders grows fainter. A gurgle. He's not gonna make it. Touch your lower body. Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Oh God. <laughs> That's actually what I wanted to say. That's what, That was my genuine reaction. Oh God. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. Oh my god. You have to see what's happening. No, no. It's just a fear. Even if... Who cares? No one wants you anyway. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? You're bleeding out. N nothing. Darkness. Blurring lights of pain. Out of it. A silhouette emerges. Crouching over you. A familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. It's so dark I can't see anything. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. I made it up. I remember everything. Oh, I don't remember everything, so let's just say no one wants to do anything with me, no one wants to party with me. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. This is a stupid world. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Don't die! My lips grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant, and the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him, a shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Oh my god. No, Kim, 72%, come on. No, you scream, behind you from your bloody lips. Your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. 
You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone. And so is Kim and the whole world. Kim. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling. No. Deeper. Take the door. I don't want to take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. This game. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. Kim. Sunrise, Arabellon. He's in the middle of a freshly clean room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to draw him in pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. The room is cleaned. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Droamin and curse. And drink water. Piss jacket, Kim. You, you took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. Okay. What did you say? Sunrise. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. Is it war today? The gates of the harbour are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. <laughs> what happened? What happened? We tried to take the diplomatic route and hoped they wouldn't attack first. They did. The Major gave the command. What happened then? As retaliation, the rifleman shot you. He hit with his carabine. I was looking for a clear line of sight. When I found it, I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. I just died in the hospital, yesterday. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name, they are all that's left. Titus is dead? Yes. I should have just thrown him under the bus. You were bleeding out. I think you said no one wants to party with you. And you warned me. I was able to disarm the Major before he got the jump on me. Thank you, although... I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the pole, though. And that's what happened. Ty 
Isis is dead. Yes. Thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And the Major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Colonel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. There is unveiled anger in his voice. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. How many casualties on the Union side? Total? Five. Glenn, Theo, Angus, the fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. And Elizabeth too. Elizabeth Beaufort was her name. Shit. The gardener. That's our fault. My fault. She didn't make it. No, she bled out before Everard's surgeon could help her. God. Everard sent his personal doctor, but a costly loss for the Union. She was being trained for leadership. I'd have presented the theory better to their leader. She never had a chance. She should not have been there in the first place. There was no way to convince them. Stop this line of thought now. You're too broken for ghosts. And that's... All. An absolute disaster. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. Six or seven. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Pretty bad, officer. You've suffered two wounds. The first is below your shoulder. The bullet passed through your shoulder blade, luckily missing your lung and heart. The second shot hit you in the thigh, the left quadriceps. No major arteries were nicked, but the bullet had to be removed. Bacterial infection was treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. I'm a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Is anyone from my station being to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Thank you. No need. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Okay. Come on. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. How are you? Uh, my disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Efrater. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? God! Wait, you check? She's really... Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hang ma hanged man? I don't know. I think the dangerous theory you presented on Classio was wrong. 
We have not found a motive or a weapon for her. I know, but I had to say someone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Oh, God. That doesn't reflect well on me, does it? Mm. This is because I'm Laputa Madre's peony, isn't it? Peon. P1. Peony. 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 Peony is in the flower. Fucking Maybell's Kim, the flowers. There was that hidden weapons cache under the building, revolutionary era. You know what I think about solving crimes? I'm going to say it's because I'm this. Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. Okay. The fucking Maybell's Kim. What? Yeah, get out and show the dried flower while it falls to pieces. This one. Remember? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. <laughs> you don't have to keep everything. He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in this city is connected to the case. Okay. There was that hidden weapons cache. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. Stop dismissing everything I say, Kim, okay? I've made loads of mistakes. Stop embarrassing me. I'm, f I'm feeling awful. I've got my pelvis is in bits. I've messed up. People are dead because of me. I didn't find my gun. I'm sorry, Kim. Sorry, Kim, I lashed out. But they seemed so mysterious. Can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? Don't know. Neither do I. Let's walk and hope something happens before you bleed to death. Classius' room is nearby. He extinguishes a cigarette of the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my suit stardom hard lately. Actually, now that I hear superstar and law official in a sentence, they sound weird together. What are you, deaf? They're perfect, like rock star politician and drug addict teacher. Embrace the superstardom you've worked so hard to establish. Okay, then. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop, Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi, badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera, lights. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. I have two skill points now. And the only task I've got... I've, I would like to get this. This was my first ever task. I'd like to find a sad song on tape, but I probably missed it. And the next task is now to go on to Clashy's room. Check out the window. We also have a brand new thought cabinet option. Which I quite like. And we are ready now to move into the final stage of the game, I believe. We're going to try and solve this case. People have died. Mistakes have been made. Uh, endless mistakes have been made. But we're not going to wrap this up yet. We're going to solve this. Me and this guy. Yes? Nothing. Me and you, Kim. Kim, do you think I'm cool? Yes. Thank you. Kim, 
should we wrap up this episode and come back maybe with another one that I'll record tomorrow so it'll be a three episode week an absolute bumper week of amazing content on my YouTube channel because Disco Elysium is a great game that I'm really really enjoying now yes I think I agree should we end this right now then yes thank you are you able to say yes in a different way yes mm, sounds like you just said it in the same way let's stop doing this yes okay will do thanks Kim let's save and we'll come back tomorrow wow what an episode what an episode the last few ones have been so good Ah, oh, so many things happen then that I would genuinely, like, I could easily just go to another save, the save before I started, and we could just go through that all again, and I'd just press different things, and it'd be so cool and interesting to see what would happen. I think there was going to be death there, whatever. I think even if I had my gun, there was going to be collateral damage. Uh, amazing. So cool. Really enjoying it. I think I will try and come back again and record another one tomorrow. Um, so it'll be a three episode week. I hope that's not too much for everybody, but I'm hoping that everybody else is excited to see this all coming to a conclusion, building to a head. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, get your comments in. Let me know what you're thinking, um, if you're enjoying it. Uh, and we'll be back with another episode, episode 31. Maybe I'll be done by 35 episodes. Who knows? I can't imagine there's going to be loads more to do, um, but definitely at least two or three more, I'd say. But yeah, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Check me out, twitch.tv forward slash ad underscore ad underscore ad. A brand new Rust server, a new wipe is about to begin, and I'll be playing a lot of that over the next coming weeks, I think. Um, so yeah, thanks very much. I'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye.